All right, before we get to the interview with Mike Ferry, I want to give Mike Ferry absolute the recognition he so deserves before we go into this interview. Um, so I'm going to read a little bit about who Mike Ferry is, just in case you do not know. So Mike Ferry is the founder of the Mike Ferry Organization and has been involved in sales and management for more than 46 years, earning an unmatched reputation for success built on a foundation of hard work, dedication to his personal goals, and an unwavering commitment to his clients and their successes. He cares about their success. That is his goal. The Mike Ferry Organization is a multi-million dollar company with tens of thousands of clients. His phenomenal natural ability to teach and mentor his original techniques has helped countless agents achieve and exceed their personal and business goals. The way he inspires all his clients, whether in their first or 50th year of real estate, to produce at high levels and apply the rules of business to their careers is legendary. Is legendary. So that is Mike Ferry. I hope you guys enjoy this interview. And like I said before, please leave us some comments. We will respond to comments as they come in and also provide little nuggets as we go through this interview. So without further ado, let's begin the interview with Mike Ferry. Hey, Mike Ferry, thank you so much for coming on the Advantage Live show. I'm so excited to have you here. You are a legend in the industry, um, and it's it's an honor to be sitting here talking to you about real estate and the tips and stuff that you provide our agents. I just want to say thank you so much. Well, it's, I, I want to share, I had a little situation take place about two weeks ago. Um, we lived in Naples, Florida in the wintertime for eight or nine years. So we were traveling there a couple of weeks ago, Adam, and uh, one of our big brokers in the area said, stop by. I'm going to put a group of agents socially spaced in the training room. Would you do a talk? I said, of course. So one of the agents before I started walked up and he said, may I ask you a personal question? I said, fire away. He said, how old are you? I said, well, <laughs> I said, I'm 75, I'll be 76 in a couple of months. He goes, you're old. I said, <laughs> I, said I, I know. And then he said, but I'm told your ideas are old fashioned. And I Ooh. said, I'm old, but my ideas are very fashionable because a business is built upon good sales foundations. And that's all I ever talk about. And he nodded and smiled and I don't think he got it, but it was kind of fun to hear that kind of a response. <laughs> that that is really good and, and i i completely agree with that i mean we are constantly getting bombarded by all this new trendy you know technology and all this kind of stuff and you know it really does come down to relationship connecting with people and if you want to categorize it as old school that's fine but it works well i i've i've done over seven thousand seminars and speeches in real estate in 46 years and about 5% are outside the industry. Marriott Corporation, I've done them for Xerox, IBM. I've spoken to the doctors at Mayo Clinic on you know, how to sell their services. Every other industry thinks that what real estate is all about is what their industry is all about, providing good service, knowing mm -hmm. what to say, knowing what to do. But when I talk to real estate people, they'd rather be on Facebook than talking to people. So it's it's a it's an interesting time for us. And I, I'm excited about the opportunity to be with you, Adam, today. But I'm also excited about the opportunity for your agents. So, yeah, I, I appreciate that. And you're, and you're right. They do. They, they tend to hide behind um, social media a little too much and it hurts their industry. And, and I, I appreciate that. I really do. But that's, that's a good uh, lead into kind of my first question for you is, you know, if you're a new agent kind of entering this industry, you know, what are some of the things you would say that they need to be doing to set themselves up for success that will separate them a little bit from the others or just the key points that they need to be doing that will help them lead into success? Well, I, I think I, I've always said there's four things a new agent should do, Adam. Number one, they have to on day one start building a database mm. because i mean i don't care if they're 22 or 42 or 62 they know at least 100 people family friends neighbors past past people through their jobs their kids friends neighbors they got to build the database and, and even though they're many times uncomfortable because of their lack of experience talking to their database if they're not talking to their database the competition is and there's very good point there's nothing more discouraging for a new agent than when their neighbor, Adam and his wife, who they've known for years, lists with Coldwell Banker 
because we forgot to tell them we were in real estate. So the number one is build the database. Number two, preview property, and it's going to be done online today mm. for speed efficiency and for COVID protection. You got to know the market. You got to know what's for sale, what's been on the market, the types of homes, neighborhoods, subdivisions, price ranges. Um, I, I was trained by a broker in Huntington Beach, California. Two jobs that I had to do eight hours a day, preview property and prospect. That was mm. it. And, you know, my first, I guess, probably 19 months, I closed 191 residential resales. Wow. Okay. But I, I spent all day long prospecting and previewing property. Everybody else was so busy writing ads or making brochures. Then number three is I'm going to suggest whether it be yours, which I'm sure are very good, or one of my competitors, they get to download all the scripts that are available. And they got to role play and practice every day. Okay. They got to role play and practice every day. Professionals practice, amateurs do not. And, oh, that's really good. And Adam, just the word practice tells us the nature of the agent and what they're going to become. But then mm. I talk, number four, I wrote down a real estate agent that's new has nothing to do but talk to people. So <laughs> I talk to 25 to 50 people a day about real estate whether it be on the phone or knocking on doors. You know, it was so cute. I got a call from, from an agent, a client of ours in Toronto, Canada, when COVID was at its peak. And that was a pretty dangerous time for all of us. And he said to me, do you think I could go knock on doors? I said, are your arms more than six feet long? <laughs> <laughs> so mastering the use of the phone today is probably vital yeah. for the conversations. I quit talking about prospecting. Then I changed it to lead generation. I quit talking about that. Now, as you and I discussed a few minutes ago, if they're just having conversations with people. So yeah. if they would have 25 conversations a day. They would preview property, build their database, and practice their scripts. They're going to have it. Here's an expression that I want your great viewers to listen to. If I know what to say, I can do what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But if I don't know what to say, I'm going to hide behind my computer, my technology, my social media. So Ooh. it's uh, I, I think it's pretty evident that what you and I try to help them understand, if there is such a thing as an answer, is the answer. You know, that's that's really good. Um, and and I, I think that's great advice um, because agents, the, especially newer ones, they need to be. They need to be engaging with experienced agents. They need to be engaging with those scripts. They need to be, they need to have that mindset of learning um, that they need to soak up everything they can. And that really they're going to be bombarded by a lot of this industry trying to get them to pay for ads, buy billboards, all the above. Right. And it's in the end, that's not going to get them business that, that connecting with people, communicating, building that database, all those things. That is just very good sound you know, advice. I, I want to share with you, um, probably now five or six years ago, we, twice a year, we do a big three day event in Toronto. We were very fortunate to have a big following in Toronto. And we're going from the airport to the hotel. And there's two bus benches side by side. I think one was Remax and one was Coldwell Banker, if I'm correct, big pictures of the agents. And I said to my wife, Sabrina, isn't that interesting? People that ride the bus can't afford a car. And if they can't afford a car, they can't afford a house. So they may be doing their marketing to the wrong group. <laughs> uh, that's true. You got you you definitely need to know your marketing avenue and like the demographic it's reaching. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I, I want, you know, what's next? Yeah. But it's interesting you should bring that up because I, I'm very fortunate to have a lot of friends that do the work I do. You know, like Floyd Wickman is a, just a terrific person out of Detroit. Mm. And like me, he's old fashioned, which is, which is kind of fun. But it's always interesting because, you know, most speakers and trainers are going to say things to an audience to get the audience to like them. Mm. And my attitude has always been, it doesn't matter whether you like me. It's, it's what we're talking about, help you get listings and make sales. So, you know, it's almost like we have to switch our mindset <clears throat> as they listen to you and your podcast and your training and listen to a person like myself to get away from, well, you know, I, I don't like the sweater he's wearing. 
<laughs> why, why is he wearing that shirt with that coat? You know, instead of that attitude is what could these ideas do to help me advance my career? Because oh, yeah, that's good. if you want likes, go to Facebook. Okay? Yeah. If you want listing, yep. come to Mike Ferry. Okay. So there that, you go. Yeah. That that's good. That's really good. And and you know, we live in that in that environment where it's all about influencers, right? Like you watch Instagram and Facebook and it's all like, I want to be an influencer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and really there there are a lot of flash but really no value. Even though they say it's all about value, they're not really providing that value. And, you know, I appreciate it, you know, calling it old school, whatever, that's fine. But to me, it's business. And that's where we've got to stay. We've got to stay in that lane and realize that, you know, people don't change. And they're still looking for that human element. And matter of fact, they're, they're looking for that more now since, you know, 2020 happened yes. now. So they really are looking for that connection. Well, that level of trust and that yeah. level comes from the questions we ask, which engages them and brings them into us. Um, yeah. I, um, I, I suspect we're going to be friends a long time. I think we think the same way. It, it sounds like it. <laughs> it does. Thank you. Thank so you. here's another one for you. Uh, <laughs> what would you say are some of the best habits real estate agents should focus on like daily, weekly, monthly that will help them grow the business in a more consistent way? Because I know, you know, with my experience with working with agents, typically it's a it's an inconsistency of activities that's just going to create this crazy flow. And how do you break that? Like, what's some of the advice you could give those agents? Well, first of all, it's a 90 day cycle business. You know, if mm. you, you think about whether you get an ad call, a sign call, a walk-in holding an open house, somebody from your farm calls you and says, come list me. It doesn't matter what the avenue is. It's usually from lead generation point to potentially getting a paycheck is gonna go 90, 95 to 120 days. So it's that wave, as you just pointed out, that's always on the ocean that is the hard part of this business. And you know, I'm not sure as much about Kentucky as I would be say Las Vegas where I live, prices have gone up dramatically in the mm -hmm. last 12 months because of COVID. Yes, same here. Average commission check has gone up dramatically. So the number of transactions is declining because as the, as the commission checks increase, agents do less. So we really have to think about how we're going to maintain because I, I measure an organization by per person productivity. Number yes. One, second by gross commission income. And then the agents don't care about number three, which is the profit <laughs> broker has to have to run the business. Um, but the per person productivity in the industry has fallen. Okay. Mm -hmm. The number of transactions. I, um, you'll get a kick out of this. I, I did some research before a call. 2018, we had about 5.4 million residential transactions in the US. 2019, we had about 5.2 million. 2020, we had about 5.4 million. They're projecting 2021 about 5.3 million. So the number of transactions is a changing, but the number of interesting. agents doing that, number of agents doing them is shrinking. That's, that's an interesting statistic. Yeah. Wow. That's fascinating. Yeah. Um, I keep hearing things like 10% of the agents are taking over 90% of the listings in North America today. And I, and I think you can see that in a great company like yourself. So to be more specific, I wrote down the following on your question more role play and practice the, the we have people adam that not a team individually do 100 150 175 transactions a year they role play and practice every day tom brady won the super bowl for the seventh time i don't know if you saw the interesting thing he did for seven evenings before the super bowl yes there on the team got that text we will win on sunday we will win on Sunday. Okay, he had to reprogram the minds of the players, but they still practiced eight hours a day. And Tom Brady gets paid a little bit more money than you and I for practice. Yeah, yeah. Michael Jordan says repeatedly, I never played a game ever in my career that was as hard as the practice I went through. So the, the top producers, the consistent producers, are always going to spend 30 to 45 minutes a day role playing and practicing whatever scripts they're trying to master. But then I wrote down, stay off the news and stay off social media, mm. especially the last year. 
because there hasn't been anything very positive in the world. Then I put down, they prospect more than anybody else. And most of that prospecting is within their database because their database, if they're a consistent 10, 20, 30, 50 deal a year producer, their database is large. But then I wrote down next, high, high, high quality customer service. It's mm. almost an obsession with good agents, okay? And then, of course, I wrote down last, they got to study, okay, the listing process. And whatever that listing process they choose to follow, it, it's got to it's got to be just automatic. It can't be a hesitation. You know, the seller wants to know what's it going to sell for, how long is it going to take to sell, and what will you do to get it sold? Of course, in today's market, getting a listing is pretty much going to answer all three questions. Okay. Yeah. They study the listing process, you know, they're, they're, and they're not afraid to use that process. So, you know, hopefully some of your veterans that watch the ad advantage um, will say, you know what, I'm doing a couple of them. I probably need to add one or two more to that list. I think so, that's really good. I, you know, it's, it's interesting you bring up like mindset, you know, it reminds me of a book, you know, uh, uh, Think and Go Rich, uh, Napoleon Hill. Phenomenal book. And, it, and it's not so much, you know, we, you know, when we hear the word rich, we think, oh, just monetary. Yes. But that book is not just about monetary richness. And it is in, it's more about relationship that then leads to monetary richness. That's right. But it is, it begins here. Yes. And then because these need to align, then you can get the activities to align with that. And, and matter of fact, you just did a video. I um, uh, just watched it. Uh, five ideas to become a stronger listing agent. Yes. And I'll, I'll put a link to that in, in, in this video when we when we post this. And um, you talked about uh, it was 50, 50, 50 mindset, skills and activities. Yes. Is that right? Correct. So those, and, and that's exactly kind of what you were just saying there. You guys need to check out his video. Again, I'll, I'll post that here, but you know, 50% mindset, 50% activities or 50% skills and 50% activities. Now, of course you kind of went on the video, that's 150%, you know, but it is true. You got to give, you know, you got to give the 150. We have a saying here at Cinch 21, it's give 121%. Yes. So, you know, that's more than a hundred. So yeah, for you mathematicians out there, yeah, we're blowing the whole percentage out of the water, but, but, but that's the point, right? We're trying, we're, we're, we're emphasizing the importance of these things. And that's what you're talking about. It's, it's the mindset. Then you've got to develop the skills and then you match those two up with the activities that you need to be doing. So you'll get a kick out of this. I don't share this very often, but five or six years ago, I got a call from Marriott Corporation in DC. And one of their VPs called and said, we're doing a convention for our top 100 salespeople. And mm. we'd like to know what it would cost to have you come and speak. And I said, you know what I do for a living? He goes, yes. I said, I'm a real estate trainer. He goes, yes. Why would you hire, why would you hire a hotel expert? He said, we watched YouTube videos of a lot of great speakers. You're the only one that talked about prospecting. <laughs> so we're going to hire you to speak. And I did a talk for their top 100 people. And, you know, I spent one hour looking at different methodologies and philosophies behind prospecting, you know, handling rejection, handling acceptance, handling embarrassment, you know, the ups and downs of no, you know, every no brings you closer to a yes. The only no that counts is the last one before you quit. Well, <laughs> That's right. they, just, they just thought it was the greatest talk in history, which was really a compliment. For a real estate speaker to be speaking to you know a Marriott Corporation, but it's because the fundamentals always work, and that's and I know what you believe in. I absolutely do. Um, that's where that's where it starts. I mean, you've got to get those fundamentals in place, get that going in the right direction, and and just learn as much as you can about those because that's that building blocks. You know, we you can watch all the training in the world, and and you're never going to take a hundred percent of what you watched in that that video, right? Or that, that course, but what you are getting is little teeny nuggets that you're placing into your entire, you know, framework of your, of your business that allows you to build that up. And that's what a lifelong learner is seeking. And, and a real estate agent absolutely needs to be operating with that kind of mindset. So I, I, I can't agree more. Uh, so I would interject one thought uh, you mentioned thinking grow rich by Napoleon Hill. Um, mm -hmm. 
I had very lucky to have three mentors in my life. Okay. Earl Nightingale, who, you know, that name. Oh yeah. Um, I worked for Earl directly for four years from 1966 to 1970 in Chicago. And I mean, it was, I mean, it was just an incredible experience. Wow. He introduced me to a guy named Michael Vance, who was the founder of Disney university and Disney university is one of the largest private business universities. And he was Walt's right hand guy for, 20 years, who introduced me to Dr. Gunther Klaus um, from Hamburg, Germany. And Dr. Klaus was the co-author of Management by Objectives with Peter Drucker. So oh, wow. I, I had three guys that virtually I communicated with almost every day for 20 years <clears throat> as I started this career and learned how to do my job. But all three always referred to Napoleon Hill. I've, re I've read that book probably a hundred times now in my life and yeah my wife on my 70th birthday which is several years ago um, got me a first edition autograph signed copy of thinking oh Paul. my oh man I mean, it's it's a special prize that i get to keep in my home office on my bookshelf so oh that is awesome I I, yeah i i love that book i've i the, the i've got two copies one copy i use for all like highlighting scratching in and everything like that the other one is pristine <laughs> so um but yeah I, it's just got a lot of information in it a lot of good good solid advice and in it yeah i'm i'm with you on that i saw a well, quote I saw a quote from napoleon hill two days ago and i didn't believe it so my wife goes online and finds it, and it was actually by Napoleon Hill. Never take advice from family, friends, and neighbors because they don't have any good advice. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, you know, <laughs> that's yeah. not a bad advice, really. <laughs> yeah. I said to my wife, Sabrina, I said, Napoleon Hill couldn't say that. And she went online and she found it was from Napoleon Hill. Napoleon so, Hill said that? Yeah. yeah because wow. Wow. That's funny. I'd yeah. almost need to, I'd like to find that quote myself and see like in what context he was actually kind of saying that in. Cause yeah. that's, but, but I mean, you know, in some ways I, I kind of get it. It's, you know, in a way it's, you know, family kind of has a, um, a bias in their answer some way or the other. Um, so you're probably not going to get, you know, an actual, actually true answer out of them. So I guess that, that does make sense. Well, it's interesting to all the new licensees and newer people with your company. It's not uncommon when you say to your family, I want to go into real estate. <laughs> They'll say, what's the matter with you? You know, can't you pick a real <laughs> business? Can't you find a profession? Ooh. You know, go to work for Costco, be a greeter, you get, uh, get a regular. <laughs> okay. So, you know, it's not always like we get the most support. My, you know, my family told me for the first 10 years I was in business, you'll never make it as a professional speaker. Mm. Well, yeah doing it 10 years and i supported all of them for the last 20 years of their life they caught on that i could make it <laughs> <laughs> well you know what ends up happening is when those statements are made over somebody if somebody is has enough passion to see it through you just inflame them to do it yeah. so I, I would agree a, a new agents or even experienced agents listening out there if someone has said that to you and you're passionate about it use it because that's that's where you, that's where you're that's where it's going to come from so I think that's good. So uh, Mike, you've got something kind of special here that you would kind of want to share. And, and one of the things was um, kind of some of the factors that are keeping the inventory so low. Like what are some of the factors that is driving down the inventory production of that? I think probably the biggest factor and most people don't want to talk about it. And I, I think this will change in the US over the next three to six to nine months the COVID problem we've all had to deal with. And we're hoping, of course, that none of our affiliates and friends have had to go through that, that problem mm -hmm. because it's a tough one. No question about it. Um, yeah. I'm, I've been vaccinated. I've got both the shots and, you know, we, we were super self-conscious about this COVID mm -hmm. problem because of my age. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, we've never had to worry about the experience. But the COVID problem, I, I would say, Adam, is probably the number one factor on the inventory being low because people have a fear that if I let this young man, Adam, into my home to talk about listing my home, he could bring this disease into my home. And mm. even though 
follow the protocols. You know, we taught the agents to wear a mask and wear gloves and have hand sanitizer. And, you know, anything they touch, they clean before they leave and they have the windows open so the fresh air comes through. It, I, I am convinced that when this COVID problem comes closer to solution, which I think we will see this year. The yeah, flood, I agree. The floodgates will open again on listing property. I, mm. and I, I can see that as plain as day. But the other thing that I think is, is interesting is we have been flooded with buyers and the flood of buyers with sellers that can't move up mm. because prices in most of the country have gone up so dramatically. The prices of homes have gone up faster than the income of the average homeowner. So I have a lot of friends in the mortgage industry that are telling me for as many loans as we're accepting on a new purchase, we're turning down loans because the buyer wants to buy the bigger home because they have equity, but they can't afford to buy because their income hasn't gone up. Mm. And, and you have to, I mean, people don't like to talk about that, but that's cool. no. Um, yeah. The other thing I wrote down is that this industry is always starting or finishing a buyer or seller's market. Right now we're in a seller's market. Okay. There's no question about that. And yeah. some of our agents, Adam, are doing some things which I've questioned them under the ethics of them. So I'll tell you that first. Okay. Yeah. Um, because I wonder about them, but you know, I've got a top, top agent we coached down in Texas. I mean, one of CB's top, top agents. She does 175 deals by herself. She has a, a team of five that do another 175 to 200 deals. Every listing, she says to the seller, if you would give me permission and sign this addendum, give me 72 hours to show it and sell it before we put it in MLS. And 50% mm. of the sellers will sign it and then they sell it in-house, which creates a higher commission check. So, uh -huh. You know, the coming soon, which I think is crazy that they- Oh yeah. But a lot of those coming soon, they're putting the coming soon so they can sell it themselves within their company before. All these depress the inventory, okay? In yeah. Terms of, because they don't show an MLS, okay? Mm -hmm. So broker metrics, which I think is a wonderful service for all of us. Yes. Told me that it's more challenging today because not all the members are coming through because of the sales before submission to MLS, okay? Um, but then I also wrote down, <clears throat> for you and I as leaders, I don't think I've ever seen a fewer number of agents that are willing to prospect. <laughs> I've never seen, it's dropping. They're dropping like flies. Okay. Um, you know, most new agents will stop at a buy owner, or stop at an expired. Well, that, that market pretty much doesn't exist. They're not mm -hmm. going to be in their car driving through neighborhoods. They're not going to see a home for sale or knock on doors next door. So, you know, and they're turning to things like social media, which does not require a conversation. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the most important thing we can do as leaders is help them understand that we are in the people business. We're in the image business and we're in the communication business. And it, we can't be in the people business without talking to people. Okay? <laughs> we can't be in the image business and succeed if we all have the three day beard and our baseball hat on backwards. We're on the team, okay, which is the the profile of so many real estate agents today, which to me is unbelievably crazy. Yeah. And if we don't learn to communicate, okay? So, you know, I think when those three factors are keeping agents from prospecting, and let's, let's be honest, most of the training is not designed around teaching people how to prospect. No, There's only Agreed. a couple of us that do that. And when an agent catches on, Boy, does their business get good. So I think COVID, okay, I think is a huge factor. I don't think there's any question that the, the we, can, we can't absorb the number of buyers in the market like we did in 2012 and 2013. We were able to absorb them, but there's not mm. anything. That, and then uh, I think the fact that agents are not willing to prospect. I think those are really big factors. Those are really good. Um, and the prospecting thing, you know, that goes back to even the whole COVID response is, you know, what you were saying about them being, you know, fearful and there's this, this, this apprehension mm -hmm. 
if agents are prospecting and they're connecting with people like you were, you were advising and I totally understand that, it, then they get the opportunity to give the, that individual the information, the facts about what's going on in the industry, which will spur them along to moving forward and getting their home on the market. And it is interesting that agents don't want to prospect. They, they've gotten comfortable with just paying a fee to get a lead. And then they get the lead and they complain about the lead not ready, re, you know, ready, willing, and able to buy. <laughs> well, you know, standard line, which the, you know, people like a Zillow are not fans of mine. Okay. Because yeah. say, okay. You buy your leads off the internet. Yes. Do they call you? He said, what do you mean? I said, the leads that you buy, do they call you? Well, no. Do they email you? Well, no. Do they text you? No. Do they send you letters? No. So, well, then how are you going to talk to them? Well, <laughs> and I said, that's where the conversation ends. Okay. You know, and, and W-E-L-L -L is not going to solve the problem. So it's, it's the communication. You know, it, it, I have people walk up to me for years and say, they'll never guess what I'd like to do. I said, okay, what do you want to do? I don't, I can't guess that. I want to be a professional speaker. I said, do you have a message? <laughs> well, no, it's kind of hard to be a professional speaker. With <laughs> okay. It's kind of, it's kind of important. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you don't buy a car without a steering wheel. Kind of yeah. makes driving easier. So that's it, so it, true. The prospecting is a tough one, but you know, let's take a look to at What percentage of the people that come into our industry <clears throat> come from a direct sales background and mm. I would bet it's less than one and a half, two percent. Yeah, I would agree. 100%. <clears throat> Rick Davidson, who's a longtime friend of mine and the former president and CEO of C21 retired, mm -hmm. back, I remember four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. And Rick and I, we still, we still talk every week because he's up, he's up in Salt Lake City. And it was interesting because Rick made a statement. Um, I was attending the International Franchise Owners for Century 21. He invited me to come and speak, which was a wonderful experience from all these countries around the world. Oh, yeah, so that's awesome. Most people don't realize Century 21 is the biggest <laughs> company in the world. The biggest yeah. company in yeah. the world. And yeah. I, people don't realize that. Well, um, Rick made a statement, and I, I was shocked as he introduced me. He said... Uh, the average age of a real estate agent in the U.S. today is 57. Mm. And only 6% are under age 35. Wow. And that was maybe three or four years ago, and it probably hasn't changed much. So here's one of the things I will say to your agents. First of all, age does not make a difference except for your ability to change your behavior. Ooh. Yep. That's and good. As a young man, you're going to be more flexible in changing your behavior than, say, a person in their 70s. Uh, the, I, I have to change how I think about our business as the market south goes up, down, goes around. I, I, so I'm very open to the change because mm. that's versatility. Um, but, you know, most people, 50s, 60s, early 70s, are pretty much locked in. So now then you and I come by and say, we have to teach you how to prospect. And they came out of the technology industry. I mean, <laughs> I, might, I might as well have a bowl of nails for breakfast. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> so it's, it's the versatility to change your behavior that is going to make the difference. Yeah, that's really good. And that's a, that's, that's kind of a good plug I'll, I'll give for you um, is even response to that is the ADAPT uh, program you have on your on your website, MikeFerry.com. Um, you have a course up there you guys uh, promote and give basically relevant information in the market, what's going on, how to use that information, and how to adapt with that information. So anyone that's watching, MikeFerry.com, check out ADAPT. Thank you. Um, Absolutely. Uh, so let's go into the next. This is kind of the final one. Um, so how would you say an agent should strengthen their listing presentation so they can be more competitive in the market to, to get those listings? Because it's, it's a game of listings. That's where we're at. The, the agents that have the most listings are going to be the ones that have the power and the control to make money. So. Well, it's it's an attitude more than anything else, being a little. Listing is one of the things that I've said for the last 
probably seven to 10 years to all of our clients. <clears throat> do you want to be the employer in the community or do you want to be the employee? Mm. They go, what do you mean? A listing agent is the employer and the employer controls the inventory. The employee's job is to distribute it. So a showing agent, a, a buyer's agent, an agent that works with buyers technically works for the agent that has the listings. Because without the listings, the agent working with buyers has nothing to sell. So the listing agent is the employer. And a lot of them still don't understand. I'll say, well, who makes more money generally, the employer or employee? Well, the employer, well, which would you like to be? And it's that not, is so good. <laughs> it's just, but of course, to me, it's just common sense, okay? Yeah. So I'd say to them, if you can strengthen how you present to a seller, then your chances for being a strong employer improve. So, you know, uh, my attitude has always been the same. And as you stated, listings are the name of the game. That's been around since dirt was found. So it's, it's a fundamental. But what I want to say to them is a big part of listing property, as you've mentioned, is mindset. So the pre appointment routine, I think is the number one factor in strengthening your presentation, asking all the pre-qualifying questions, really getting an understanding of who they are before you make the presentation, because then you're going to maneuver into your presentation based upon how they answer the questions, um, making sure they get a sound, basic business pre-listing package, not 27 pictures of yourself, which is what agents want to send out. And then they use their high school picture, for God's sakes. You know? And, and then, then the seller opens the door and goes, oh, you know? <laughs> who are you? Yeah. Who's this person over here? You know, why is your mother? Update your photo. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and they, they never use updated photos, you know. Uh -oh. So that, that um, pre-listing package is the information that they can review before you see them, which is going to draw out their questions and objections. So then you call back and confirm they read the package. And the two common things they will say to you is, Adam, I looked at your package and my husband and I are not sure if we want to talk to you or not. I can appreciate that and I ask why. Well, the press you put on the property. Well, you know what? Thank you for bringing that up. Why don't we do this? The moment I get to the house, why don't we discuss price? And if we can't mm. come to an agreement that's good for you and the buyers, I'll leave. But if we can, let's move forward. Now they've handed me their objection in advance, okay? So I can prepare for the price objection. But then I also made a note, if you want to be a strong listing agent, getting your mindset in order for that 15, 20 minutes before. I, I used to show up for every listing appointment, 15 minutes in advance, sit in the car by myself, review the documents. I'd read through my listing presentation a couple of times. You know, I, I would always check is my hair combed, you know, is my tie on straight, you know, for the ladies, use your makeup on. So then at five minutes too, I was ready mentally. Mm. So the last way to strengthen your listing presentation is to approach the door with the mindset that you're going to get the listing period. There you nobody, go. Nobody is going to do a better job than you can do. Now, all of those are a little bit of a challenge, okay, because you've got to put some work into that. But all the top listing agents, and we coach several thousand people that are top listing agents. I mean, these people are, they take 10, 12, 15 listings a month routinely. Mm. And in this market, they don't have any inventory because they all sell, okay? The biggest complaint I get today, Mike, I don't have any inventory. Of course, everything's <laughs> sold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, which is, by the way, the purpose of taking a listing is not to have inventory, but to have sales. Um, but the other thought on strengthening, Adam, is you've got to go beyond a casual conversation, okay? You know, all this building rapport and, you know, you know this, all these levels of getting to know them are important, but building rapport is trying to understand who they are and what they're trying to accomplish. That is done through the pre-qualifying process. So when you walk into the house, you know, you see agents say, oh, I love your house, it's so beautiful. Oh, I see you have a dog, I love puppies. <laughs> what does that have to do with listing the home? Okay, we're there as professional people to make a mm. professional presentation, mm. which then leads to the hardest part of strengthening 
which is accepting the fact that you have to use a strong scripted presentation. You have to. Okay? Yeah. And a strong scripted presentation is nothing more than a series of questions you're asking to engage them, create participation, get an understanding of what they're trying to accomplish so you can then present a solution. So what, what I'm going to do, Adam, if I may, I yes. have a little report I wrote called Strengthening Your Presentation. It's got 15 different points on it. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask Lori to forward this to you. Okay? Please. And then you can decide how you want to distribute it within, within the company. To yeah, we'll put it in the description as a link. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Awesome. Thank you. Well, I hope, I hope what we're saying today helps and makes sense to everybody. Oh, I think it does. Um, you know, and going even back to what you were just saying, you know, it goes back to the very beginning. We were talking about mindset and scripts and learning. When you have that skill set already in your mind, when you're going into those listing appointments, it's you are. It's not a matter of if you're going to have objections. You are absolutely going to have them in every conversation you have with with a client, and especially on a listing appointment. And you've got to be able to handle those objections. And if you're going in there, like you were saying, just all, oh, cute dog and all this kind of stuff, you've kind of just not, it's okay to build a rapport, but, but you've already kind of knocked down when you get into that environment where you're starting to handle the objections professionally. Yeah. Um, so I, I agree with that. Go in with the mindset, you're going to get this listing. You're the best agent for the job. You're being hired as a professional. You're a rock star. Go do it. Right. And, and you know, tie that into, you know, that we, we constantly hear how, you know, the the unnamed uh, company out there taking over our industry. Look, that 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 unnamed beast, if you will, can't take over a rock star agent. They can't yeah. do it. Right. Yep. They can't do the service that we can as rock star agents. And that goes to the listening presentation all the way through to the mindset, the activities, the skills, all of that. MikeFerry.com teaches all of that. So. Uh, this has been really, really good. Well, I, I appreciate you inviting me, and I'm hoping that you get good participation. And, uh, you know, I, I, I say all the time that an agent's job is to put on a performance at a higher level than a competition can provide. And the performance is when the audience is engaged. Mm. Okay? The week before COVID hit, we because we live in Las Vegas and we live in a high rise on the strip. So we go to all the shows and we've done this for the 15 years we've lived here. And the day before, two days before they closed down this country for us, unfortunately, um, we saw Lionel Richie live. Oh, and, wow. I mean, the voice is almost not there. He's in his seventies, but yeah. the most entertaining, engaging performer. I mean, probably on a scale from one to 10 or 12. Okay. Oh, wow. And whether you like him or not, the performance, you know, it's almost hard to comprehend. And I tell agents, watch the great performers, singers, dancers, athletes, professors, watch people that perform at a high level. And those people can become great, great real estate salespeople because they know how to perform. So hopefully what you and I are doing today will help them understand the importance of upgrading that, that performance. Yeah, I, I think so. I think it's just all really good sound advice. I hope they heed it. They'll see success if they do. Thank you. Mike, thank you so much as always for, you know, coming on the show. You're always welcome back. Thank you for the value you have provided the viewers here. Um, really do appreciate you. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you.